In this video, I'm going to show you how to conduct an interaction contrast analysis in SPSS. And I have to say, this is a really cool and powerful feature. So if you can get your head around doing this, and it's not very complicated, a lot of doors are going to open for you when it comes to testing hypotheses in a powerful way. And I'll show you an example that was realistic to me just a couple of weeks ago, where I didn't get a significant interaction, but I didn't want to stop there because I had theory supporting me. So here's an example where I have a 2 by 2 factorial ANOVA with a dependent variable. And it's a continuously scored dependent variable. And I got a sample size of 100. And I've got two independent variables, factor 1 and factor 2. And there are two levels associated with these two independent variables. So we've got people coded 1 and people coded 2 across the whole spectrum of the 100 cases. And the same thing goes for factor 2, which is just another independent variable. Just a classic 2 by 2 factorial between subjects ANOVA. So if I do the analysis and show you that I just barely missed getting significant results, go into general linear model univariate, put the dependent variable there, factor 1 and factor 2 and the fixed factors. I'll plot the means so you can get a sense for the nature of the interaction, factor 1, factor 2 in horizontal and separate lines, and click continue and look at the descriptive statistics and effect size continue. So this is the traditional way of conducting a 2 by 2 factorial between subjects ANOVA. The vast majority of people would do it this way. And we'll find that I've got equal sample sizes across the groups. This is fictitious data just to make sure that I got a particular effect. But it's very similar to the effect I observed a couple of weeks ago. So here's the ANOVA table with the key terms in the analysis and I've got the two main effects here factor one factor two and now I've got the interaction and you can see that the interaction was not quite statistically significant p equal 0 0.06 with an f value of 3.611 and 1 in 96 degrees of freedom now if you look at the plot of the means this is the classic disordinal interaction that you commonly see in papers and that you probably get in your own data and you can see that there's a difference in the means here and then there's the crisscrossing here now, whether these means are statistically significantly different from each other is not relevant to the interaction per se. Ultimately, in the conventional sense of testing the hypothesis, I can't say that there's a statistically significant interaction because the p-value is 0 0.06. And it would be very risky to argue for marginal significance because a lot of reviewers will jump up and down and say you can't do that. So what do you do in this case when this is exactly the pattern of means that you predicted on the basis of theory and or previous research. Well, one powerful option is to use contrast analysis. And I encourage you to check out this paper, Performing Contrast Analysis in Factorial Designs. It's a very accessible paper. And I'm going to skip to the key part that is relevant to conducting a contrast analysis in a program. And we can see here that we have the weights for interaction specified for this 2 by 2 design. And the article says that you need to give weightings of 0.5, negative 0.5, negative 0.5, and plus 0.5. So these are contrast weightings that need to be specified to reflect a particular interaction. Now this interaction is a disordinal interaction because it's saying that the mean here is higher than the mean here. But then once you get to the next level of the independent variable, the means flip over. So it's higher, lower lower, higher. And that's exactly the pattern of means I've got here. Higher, lower, and then lower, higher. It's the crisscross. So the challenge is to specify that in SPSS so that I can test this specific contrast, which is going to allow me to do the test in a planned comparison framework, which then allows me to use a one-tailed test. And you can reference Fur and Rosenthal who say planned contrast analyses can be conducted with one tail. And you've also got Rosenthal and Rose, Rosnow's book who also say the same thing. Now other people argue that one tail tests can be applied in this context. So the challenge in something like SPSS is how do you get your data set up so that you can do this planned contrast analysis? And the solution to that problem is this. You need to create one independent variable and have your dependent variable data exactly the same way. So you need to specify groups one to four. I've got four groups in this analysis. So the first group stays exactly the same thing. So this was the first group, one and one. 
that's a group and I've got them over here as one. Now the second group which is actually in the original data two and one I've got 25 people that were two and one well in the revised or reorganized data I've now got them labeled just as two. Now here's where things change. For the next group where it's one and two in the conventional two by two factorial ANOVA I've got them labeled three. And then finally, the last group, which was labeled two and two across the two independent variables, you guessed it, they're labeled four. Now with this reorganization of the data, I can conduct the planned interaction contrast analysis. And to do that, go into analyze, compare means, one way, Put the dependent variable in the dependent list and the factor in the factor list and click on options and we'll get descriptive statistics. You can get the homogeneity variance test if you like. Now the important bit is the contrast. Once you click on contrast, this is where you can specify your coefficients to reflect the interaction that you had in mind when you originally thought of the experiment or the study. So let me just go back to my data before I do that. If I go back to my data, I'm expecting the first group, which is labeled 1, so 1 and 1, which is the first group, is here. That's that light blue circle here. They're the first group in my data file, and they're lower. And let's just say that was what my theory predicted, is that they would be lower in the first level of the first factor, and then they become the higher point at level 2 in the, sec in the first factor. So it's basically going to go negative, positive, and then positive, negative. So negative, positive, positive, negative. So I need to specify that in my reorganized data. So analyze, compare means one way, and reselect that, click contrast. So I want negative 0.5, negative, positive, and then positive, negative. Again, reflecting the pattern of means in the graph that I just produced. So click continue and click OK. And in the output, here are the descriptive statistics. It looks like a one way between subjects ANOVA, but you're really doing an, a two by two interaction contrast analysis. You're basically tricking SPSS into doing something it wouldn't naturally do but I'll prove to you that it actually does produce the accurate result. Here's the test of the homogeneity of variance, which is satisfied. Here's the ANOVA, we're not interested in that. Here are the contrast coefficients again, negative 0.5, lower, then goes higher, and then higher, lower. Again, going back to my plot of means. Lower, higher, higher, lower. Lower, higher, higher, lower. And now look at the contrast table. And I've got the dependent variable, and the t-value is 1.900, and with 96 degrees of freedom, that p-value is 0 0.060. Now, that is the same p-value that I got in the ANOVA over here, p equal 0 0.060. And moreover, if I increase my t-value decimal place, I'll show you that you get exactly the same f-value and t-value. Now the relationship between t and f when you have one degree of freedom in the numerator is that you can square the t value and it'll get, give you the f value, so 3.61. 3.611, so when I squared that t value within rounding, I got exactly the same result, 3.61091. It's exactly the same analysis. This contrast analysis with these weightings has produced a positive t value and a p-value of 0 0.060. Now the benefit of this is that now I can justifiably do a one-tailed test and cut this p-value in half. So 0 0.06 divided by 2, I have a p-value of 0 0.03. And so now I can say that I've rejected the null hypothesis of no interaction between these variables. So instead of being stuck with an f-value of 3.611 and a p-value of 0 0.06, and you can't do a one-tailed f test. There is no such thing. It's conceptually nonsensical because there's only 
one side of a distribution for an f value. There are only positive f values. You can, however, get negative or positive t values. So in this case here, I would split that p value in half, 0 0.03, after I told my reader that I've done a planned comparison because this is the pattern of means that I expected to see on the basis of theory or data. And then I would cite Rosenthal or Rosnow, Fur and Rosenthal. There are other papers out there that say you can do one-tailed contrast analyses, but certainly these are two references for you to get that. And instead of being stuck with no effect, you're now being able to say that you've got a significant effect. Now, this is the most basic interaction analysis possible. There are other types of contrast analyses that can be performed. And we've got here, in a simple 2 by 2 there's also a synergistic effect with this pattern of means here, higher, lower, and then they're equal at the next level of the independent variable. That's a, that's a semi-commonly observed pattern of means in the data. Now, it's important to get the pattern of the coefficients consistent with the pattern of the means, or consistent with your theory. And a positive t value implies that your pattern of coefficients is consistent with the pattern of the means. You can get a significant t value that's in the opposite direction of what you actually predicted. And that will be a negative t value. And that's saying that you know your theory is not supported. In fact, the opposite of your theory was supported. So you have to be careful to get your coefficients in the right direction and observe a positive t value in order to obtain and report evidence that's consistent with your hypothesis. Now lastly, this is only a 2 by 2. You can do contrast analyses for interactions with 3 or 4 or 5 levels in an independent variable. And so you just end up doing more complicated contrast coefficients. And I'll probably do another video where I do more complicated ones, but certainly the 2 by 2 is by far the most common interaction analysis performed in the context of ANOVA. And I really think this opens up a lot of doors for you.